Welcome back to the Cartridge Twins, where today we're going to talk about The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD on the Wii U. I've still been chipping away at my backlog of games, and this is one that I am glad I finally have gotten to. So let's talk about this thing. So right away, let's just address the question of, did I enjoy this game? Well, yeah, of course. It's a Zelda adventure. Kind of hard to go wrong when you're playing a Zelda game. Did I like it as much as Twilight Princess, which I had just beaten before playing this one? Uh, probably not. I, I prefer Twilight Princess. But having said that, Twilight Princess or Wind Waker, which will be more memorable down the line as time goes on? Honestly, I'm not sure. I think Wind Waker might be. It just feels like a more unique experience. But either way, you can't go wrong because both are great Zelda titles. The biggest point of contention with this game, which I'm sure you already know, is the art style, the visuals, which to me, I thought they were enjoyable and I've never really had an issue with them. I think the art style is a big part of what makes this game so memorable for people. And again, as time goes on, I, I think that's something that's going to even stick in my brain as well. I can see the argument that the visuals are a little bit childlike and yeah there, there's truth to that and overall I think this Zelda title is more of a game geared toward a younger audience. I think it's a little bit on the easier side compared to other Zelda titles but having said that when you take the story into account or when you get to that Tower of Ganon and the difficulty kind of raises up quite a bit. That's where, if you're a kid playing, you might need an older brother or a parent or someone to help you out. Because it does get a little tricky toward the end. And the story, it's pretty in-depth and honestly probably one of my favorite Zelda storylines that I can remember. So if the art style is something that has kept you from playing this game, I would say get that thought out of your mind. It's probably something you'll get used to and just forget all about the art style once you are immersed in this wonderful Zelda title. Another negative that I always heard with this game was the sailing, but in the HD version, you can get the swift sail, which helps tremendously. I haven't played the original Wind Waker. This is only for the Wii U that I'm reviewing here, but I didn't find the sailing bad at all, especially later when you can kind of do a quick travel with your Wind Waker. The sailing to me, I mean, it fit wonderfully. Just going to each little island was great. The map was beautiful just on that grid. And it's kind of like you either can have a Zelda title that you sail around in, Wind Waker, or one that you kind of just walk around a lot from area to area or use Epona, which can kind of be a pain sometimes as well. So every Zelda title, title has some, some trekking in it that maybe you get tired of, but this, this felt right at home to me and it was a nice change of pace. I feel like the sailing and just being able to go to each little island adds to the fact that I think this is probably the best Zelda to just pick up and play. I never felt lost or like, okay, what was I doing? I don't remember where to go. I don't remember where I've been. Each time you just kind of, you, you jump in, you have a pretty good idea of which islands you need to go to and what you're doing. And so it made this Zelda title just super easy to just jump in and play a little bit or a lot of it kind of up to you and again when it comes to the story I think this is definitely one of my favorite in the Zelda franchise it starts off pretty simple you need to save your sister who gets taken by this big bird and then it turns into so much more and has some of those classic Zelda surprises throughout and dang old Ganon being up to no good again but this was a really fresh cool take on the Zelda franchise and especially Hyrule. I think going back and playing a lot of these old Zelda games lately 
has given me a fresh appreciation for Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom just to see how many little Easter eggs and just parts of those games that Nintendo included the old games in, if that makes sense. Like references and the, the sounds and just even kind of the story. All of it kind of blend in together into this one grand adventure once you finally get to Tears of the Kingdom. So just one little example would be like Beetle's shop. So in Wind Waker, he's, you know, he's kind of just sailing around on his boat around the islands. You go in and you can, you know, buy a few things. And then you get to Tears of the Kingdom and he's wandering around with all his items strapped to his back. And still just that interesting dude that you knew from Wind Waker. And now he's in Tears of the Kingdom, not sailing around, but just wandering around and he's got to have some strong legs for all those items he's carrying but it's just cool that nintendo has carried over these characters now i need to see more of tingle because i loved having tingle in wind waker not in a major role but you know he he's there he's important in in the hd version you're finding all those tingle statues and i found that to be really cool and exciting because he's such a fun silly character but my favorite part of Wind Waker has to be the combat. It just feels really clean. And when you get off, when you pull off one of those, uh, those counter moves, especially fighting a Dark Nut, it just feels so good. Usually those Dark Nuts and other Zelda titles are just so frustrating. But in this one, you've got that counter move where maybe you're going to spin attack him on his head or you're going to roll around and swipe him from the back. It just felt so good in Wind Waker when you get into the combat, which led me to finishing the Savage Labyrinth on my first try. In Twilight Princess, there's a similar labyrinth, but I got to the final area with a bunch of dark nuts and I lost in the final area. It was so frustrating, but in Wind Waker, tackled it. On the first try and it felt so good because the combat in this game is great so if you love combat in zelda titles i think this is the zelda title for you having said all that this game is not without its frustrations yes i praised the sailing but you know it can get kind of old but it, and that one's not a very big deal there's a slide mechanic that i did not like one bit I just, I couldn't get it, it's too slow. And you know, like you're sliding across a little wall. It's just, it's kind of lame. Um, and there are a couple main points of frustration, but that could be like a, a get good on my part thing. When you get to the Tower of Ganon and you gotta basically do different levels in the tower, it can get, frustrating that's where the difficulty spike definitely comes in and it doesn't even really feel warranted at times but i mean you get through it still with like full health because this game's pretty forgiving with its hearts so it's not a big deal but it, it was a little frustrating also when you are fighting ganon there is one phase that is honestly a bit absurd it almost feels out of place and even in the guide, it's like, okay, stand against the wall, and then you're supposed to shoot one of the arrows at the tail of Ganon. Oh, it's so frustrating. I think standing against the wall made it even harder because he'd get you pinned back there. But once you get through that phase, overall, the Ganon fight's pretty easy. So it's not a deal breaker by any means, but just be aware this is not smooth sailing <laughs> the entire game. And with all that being said, I would definitely recommend this game. It is obviously a great Zelda title. I think everyone knows that by now. I mean, it's an old game. It's great. Everyone knows. Don't let the art style throw you off. If you have a Wii U, play this game. Will it ever come to the Switch? Who knows, it seems kind of doubtful. Maybe you're crossing your fingers for the Switch 2 now. I don't know. I don't think they can let this game kind of die on the Wii U, but I'm also not holding my breath that it's coming to Switch. So play this game any way you can. I'm so glad I have my Wii U. I love Wii U. 
I want to keep playing Wii U games. I don't know which Wii U game I will play next. Maybe I'll finally finish Star Fox Zero, which I liked that game. Never did beat the final boss though, so maybe I need to go back and do that now. But anyway, how do you feel about Wind Waker? Is it one of your favorite Zeldas? Is it at the bottom of your list? For me personally, I'm not sure where I would rank it. I kind of want to do a, a Zelda title ranking video sometime. It's definitely at least in the middle of the pack. Probably right behind Twilight Princess. I don't know. Twilight Princess was pretty high for me on the list after just finishing it. We'll see. Maybe I'll make that video. Maybe I won't. But either way, let me down know down below. Do you agree with all my thoughts on The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD? And as always, remember, without video games, things do not seem to go as well.